Hello and welcome. I'm so glad that you're here today. My name is Dawn Bab Prohovnik and I'm a children's book author and I'm so grateful to Green Bean Books for inviting me to share my latest picture book with you. It's called Lucy's Blooms and it is a wonderful story to read on a beautiful springtime day like today. It's a great story to pair with planting activities in your own garden. Um, it's also a really great story to read with grandparents. So I'll share the story with you, then I'll answer some questions that have come in, and I'll wrap up by talking about some enrichment activities that you can find on my website and that I've left for you at Green Bean Books if you're local to the area. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and read the story. This is Lucy's Blooms. It's written by me. I'm Dawn Bab Prohovnik, and it's illustrated by Alice Brereton and published by West Margin Press. Lucy's Blooms. Lucy wove her wagon through the meadow behind Graham's house. She breathed in the soft, sweet smell as hundreds and hundreds of bright yellow blooms danced tall and proud in the wild grass. While Lucy wandered, she sang Graham's gardening song. Load up the wagon and off we go. Plant little seeds and watch them grow. A clump of blooms leaned in to listen. Lucy stopped and smiled. Hello there, she said. Would you like to enter a flower contest? We could surprise Graham with a new blue ribbon. The blooms swayed in the breeze as if to nod their approval. First, I need to move you, Lucy said, as she gently shoveled the blooms out of the ground and into a cozier spot. She scooped handfuls of soil until the flower pot was full. The blooms stood still. Now wait here, Lucy said, patting down the last bit of soil. The flower festival is in three days, but I'll come back to visit you tomorrow. Lucy danced tall and proud, just like the blooms in the meadow, all the way back to Graham's house. Oh my, what a lively show, said Graham, clapping her hands. You must be ready for a cool drink after all of that whirling and waving. While Graham poured the pitcher, she whistled a song. Lucy stood close to listen. The blooms dug their roots into the soil and explored their new surroundings. But as the day lingered on, the soil grew dry and the blooms began to fade. The next morning, Lucy returned to find her blooms drooping over the side of their pot. Oh no, she said, you must be thirsty. Let's get you some water. Lucy lifted her watering can and sprinkled her blooms. While Lucy watered, she whistled a song. Her blooms perked up to listen. Much better, said Lucy. I'll come back first thing tomorrow to give you another drink. Lucy skipped back to the house to draw pictures of her blooms for Graham. Oh my, what a cheery bunch, said Graham. I'll bet they're hardy too. Did I ever tell you the story about the daisies I knew that liked to play hide and seek? Lucy nestled next to Graham on the porch swing to listen. The blooms tried to nap in the meadow, but the blazing sun was too bright. The next day when Lucy returned, she found her blooms curled and crisp. 
Oh no, said Lucy, you must be uncomfortable. Maybe you'd like a shadier spot. She wheeled the wagon under the old oak tree and climbed onto Graham's tire swing. Did you know that once upon a time, Graham played hide and seek with some daisies? Her blooms peeked their sunny faces out to listen. Ah, much better, said Lucy when her story was finished. I'll come back first thing tomorrow to take you to the contest. Lucy skipped back to the house and snuggled under a blanket to watch the sunset with Graham. Oh my, this is my favorite part, said Graham. Mine too, said Lucy. The blooms shivered in the cool evening air. The next morning, Lucy's blooms huddled together in the center of their pot. Oh no, said Lucy, you must have been too cold last night. Lucy brought her blooms out into the sun. She sprinkled more water on her blooms. She whistled more songs to her blooms. She told more stories to her blooms. Then she danced a little dance for her blooms. Lucy's blooms bobbed playfully as they basked in Lucy's love. Much better, said Lucy. Now you're ready to win. Lucy rolled her wagon down the path and into the town square. The judges looked at Lucy's blooms. They sniffed at Lucy's blooms. <laughs> they measured Lucy's blooms. Then one of the judges opened the rule book and pointed to the small print. Aha, she said, these are a bunch of weeds. And as the rule book says, no weeds allowed, another judge said. Lucy wilted. The weeds went white. Tough break, kid, said the first judge. Better luck next time, said another, as they moved on to the prize table. Lucy watched as the winners were announced. Most beautiful, most fragrant, most colorful. She stood by her blooms and breathed in their soft, sweet smell. Their cottony tufts tickled her nose. Don't worry, Lucy said. You win the grand prize. Most loved. Her blooms shimmered in the sun. Come on, Lucy said with a smile. I'll race you back to Graham's. She took hold of her wagon and ran. A fantastic flurry of silky seeds swirled and twirled behind her. That is Lucy's Blooms, and I sure hope that you enjoyed listening to this story as much as I enjoyed writing it and as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you today. I wanted to answer some of the questions that have come in. So it's, let's see, the questions start out, do you like to work in a garden? Ah, that's a great question. Yes, I very much like working in the garden. In fact, I have right here some of the seeds that I will be planting in my garden this year. I have dahlias and gloriosa daisies. Those look a little bit like Lucy's blooms. I have some cosmos and zinnias 
And then one of my very favorite flowers to plant in the garden are nasturtiums. My own gram always planted those in her garden, so I put them in my garden too. And then of course I have my little gardening hat that I will wear once I'm out working in the garden. So yes, I love working in a garden. Thanks for asking that question. The next question is, do you like dandelions? I do like dandelions. I am probably the rare gardener that likes dandelions, but that part in the story where it begins with the yellow blooms dancing tall and proud in the meadow, I love seeing that out in nature. So um, yes, I am very much a fan of dandelions. I like them at all stages of their de de development. I like them when they're yellow, and I like them when they're white and they, they go into their seed puffs. So. Yes, very much a fan. Where did the idea for this story come from? I love it when people ask that question. Um, that is a great question for this story. When I um, was gardening some years back, so this story originated actually in my own garden, I had a little patch of soil right by my front door that was not planted yet. I hadn't put any seeds in it yet, but there were two plants that were growing and they were kind of competing for who would grow the fastest or which one would grow the fastest. And I was fascinated by these plants and I nurtured them. I watered them and I made sure they had plenty of sun and plenty of shade. And I probably talked to them and maybe even whistled to them. I doubt that I danced to them except um, if I ran through or walked through a spider web. I, I do a little spider web dance uh, is what I call it if I happen to get stuck up in a, a spider web. So maybe I danced a little dance for them. But needless to say, I took good care of these blooms. And I was curious what they were called. I, I hadn't planted them, so I was curious. So I researched with some master gardeners what these plants were. And I was told they were weeds and that they should be pulled from my garden. And I was heartbroken. I thought, no, I have taken such good care of these blooms, I can't possibly take them out of my garden. And so that caused me to begin to ask that question. How is it that we decide what is worthwhile to tend and to, to nurture and what is not? And how is it that we give certain labels to certain types of things? So I explored those questions as I worked on the story for Lucy's Blooms. So, um, I hope you enjoyed that, that, that backstory of how that story came about. So here's another question. Do you like to write? I get that question a lot when I do school author visits. And I always ask the question back to the students. Do you like to write? And I often get mixed responses from students. Not everybody gives me an enthusiastic yes. I answer that question with an enthusiastic yes, and I always share that, that my reasoning for that is that I think words are really important. I think our ideas are important, and it's one thing to say them out loud, but when we take the time to write them down and formulate our thoughts and make it more permanent by writing it down, those words are more meaningful. They have more power. They, they hold more value. So I am a big advocate for writing. I write to-do lists and I write reminder notes and I write love notes and thank you notes and I write stories. So um, yes, I definitely like to write. All right, the next question is, do you have other books? And um, I do have other books. My two most recent books before Lucy's Blooms are two humorous books. One is called Where Does a Pirate Go Potty? And the other is called Where Does a Cowgirl Go Potty? So these are just silly books that hopefully make readers laugh. I certainly laughed a lot when I was writing them. And then I have other books that I wrote quite a long time ago actually in a series called Storytime with Signs and Rhymes. And the, the books in this series tell a story and then also teach a little bit of American Sign Language. And the very first book that I wrote in that series, See the Colors, was about um, the colors in a garden. So there's a theme for you. Um, I definitely like writing stories about gardens. So those are the other books that I've written. Let me see if there are other questions. Oh, yes, this one. Have you ever entered a gardening contest? I have not ever entered a gardening contest. I have entered writing contests, and I have not won, but I have entered writing contests, but not gardening contests. The only contest that I've ever um, entered that I've 
One is a reading contest. This was actually a contest that I won back when I was a fifth grade student and Mr. Snook, my fifth grade teacher, had a contest that he ran every year that was who could read the most books during the school year. And I started at one shelf in my library and I worked my way around that library and read as many books on those shelves as I could and I won the prize that year. So that's the only contest that I um, have entered and won. Um, but it wasn't a gardening contest. I do, however, attribute that particular contest to my being a good writer. Um, I always say that the easiest way to become a better writer is to be a regular reader. So if you're looking for ways to become a better writer, that's my big tip for you. So that's the last question in the list. I just have a reminder here to talk to you about some enrichment materials. So if you go out and visit my website, which is dawnprohovnik.com, and you click on either the resources tab or the summary post tab or the books tab, really all over the website, but those are probably the three main places, you'll find different enrichment materials that go with all of my books. And I have some new fun activities related to the story for Lucy's Blooms that I hope you'll give a try. Some planting activities and some science projects for those of you that are doing STEM activities at home. Um, my favorite enrichment activity on my website is an original song that I got to collaborate on with musician Maya Wynn. She wrote the music for and performed the song for Lucy's Bloom. So it goes along with the book. It's a beautiful song um, and there's an animated video that goes along with it. So I hope you'll give that a look. And then for those of you who are local, if you head over to Green Bean Books, I have a little activity kit that I've left for you there. Um, I also have just some freestanding postcards that you can pick up um, and the activity will tie into Lucy's Blooms. So um, they're just in these little grab and go bags. So you can drop by Green Bean Books, say Don Prohovnik sent you and let them know that you got to listen to the story for Lucy's Blooms and you want the grab and go kit that goes along with that. So. With that said, I think I'll wrap up here and again, just say thank you for joining me. I'm so glad that we got to share this time together and I hope you keep reading books and keep listening to stories. Bye.